Nobody wins when the family feels. Hey, we got two people shot. Look like two people shot right here. 15, 25. Yeah. the slaying of the teens, Chicago police continue their search for the gunman responsible for the brazen downtown daylight ambush that claimed the boys' lives. So I'd like to start out by offering our condolences on behalf of Superintendent Snelling and the Chicago Police Department to the two families that were touched by this senseless act of violence today. Approximately 1225 today, several students were exiting the Innovations High School when two cars pulled up and a group of individuals exited said vehicles fired multiple times, striking two of the teenage students of uh, Innovations High School. These individuals were taken to Northwestern Hospital where they succumbed to their injuries. So we'd like to actually say again our thoughts and prayers are with the families of these two students. Chicago is a city you either love or hate. Are we just approaching the fourth week of 2024? And on the third week in Chicago, you had a man who took the life of eight people, his own family. Four days later, you got two teenagers who gunned down in front of their high school on lunch break. And the shootings we about to report not taking place in the quote unquote hood. We talking about suburban Chicago and downtown. And nowadays, there's footage everywhere. And some of this footage, I gotta leave the link in the bio because I can't play on YouTube. So before we go over this one, I don't give you no angle. I just give you the story. So with that being said, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We're gonna jump right to it. This is a picture of Romeo Nance, just 23 years old. January 23rd, 2024, it was reported that Romeo was suspected of shooting and killing eight people in two different houses in a suburban Chicago area. All eight was relatives. The first shooting was captured on camera. The next day, authorities located him in Texas, but he fatally shot himself. Now it's been days later, and the motive is still unclear. But what we do know, his girlfriend was arrested three days after him, 21-year-old Callie Cleveland Singleton. She was later released on home confinement. And so far charged in the horrific mass shooting in Joliet was released from custody today. Kylie Cleveland is accused of misleading investigators while a manhunt was underway for her boyfriend. Who police say murdered eight people, including several members of his own family. CBS 2's Andrew Ramos was at Will County Court in Joliet and has new information on the case. Kylie Cleveland is back home tonight and being ordered to stay there on electronic monitoring after she was charged with obstruction of justice. This as CBS2 has learned new details about where she went after her boyfriend killed eight people. 21-year-old Kylie Cleveland appeared before a Will County judge accused of withholding critical information about her boyfriend, Romeo Nance, who is also the father of her three-year-old son. 
Investigators believe Nance fatally shot multiple members of his own family, including his mother, aunt, uncle, brother, and three sisters. He would later shoot two men at random, leaving a total of eight people dead and one injured. Detectives are still trying to determine what Cleveland knew, if anything, about the murders. CBS2 has learned through sources that after the rampage took place, Cleveland went to a local sports bar in Joliet, where she was hanging out with friends around 9 p.m. According to the source, the 21-year-old appeared to be pacing back and forth while at Double J Sports Bar. It would be the following night when Cleveland was brought in for questioning at the Joliet Police Department. That's where detectives said she gave false information and lied about not having Nance's phone number. It's a big deal, but the trick is whether or not they could prove it. Considering that the gunman took his own life, Cleveland at this point is the only person charged in connection to this case. And experts say when you factor in the gravity of the crime, if found guilty, that will certainly play a role in her sentence. It's a serious case. It's not, you know, lying about a shoplifting. It's lying about a, a, a multiple murder. And so I think that will factor into what sentence is eventually imposed. She could get probation on this charge, but she could also get up to three years in the Illinois Department of Corrections. Now, a motive in the mass murders still remains unclear. It's something officials say we may never find out. Cleveland is due back in court on February 8th. Reporting from outside Will County Court, I'm Andrew Ramos. Now, a day after she was released, some more tragic news happened in downtown Chicago. But before we go over that, I want us to take a moment and identify the fallen victims of the mass shoot. Five people in the first house, two girls, Angel Nance, 14, Aloha Nance, 16, two women, Alexandria Nance, 20, and Christine Easters, 38, and 31-year-old man, Joshua Nance, were found deceased in a home at 2212 W. Acres Road. At 2225 W. Acres Road, two more people and an unidentified kid, a 35-year-old man, William Easter II, and 47-year-old woman, Tamika Nance. May they all rest in peace and love and condolences to their families. Now, as we go over the incident that happened this past Friday at a local high school for troubled kids. Just yesterday, someone that lived outside the U.S. had visited Chicago and he posted this video with the caption, people in America, this how Chicago really looks. I mean, it's beautiful. Now family, if I go out to school for lunch with a group of people and I was spotted and my friend, no one else was shot, is it possible someone at the school gave the location or at least the time frame of when they will be coming out, especially during lunch hours, broad daylight, in downtown Chicago? Now, I want you guys to keep that in mind. January 26, 2024, in a video I can't play, you can see two teenagers fighting for their life in front of their school just steps away as people frantic and call 911. The link for the video is in the description. Two teenagers that was identified in that video was Robert Boston, 16 years old, and Martario Williams, 17 years old. May they both rest in peace and love and prayers to their families. Family and friends said the teens knew each other. They was only steps from their school, as we mentioned. Innovations High School, located on 16 North Wabash Avenue. Now someone we're gonna assume was at the scene had commented on a post and said this. And one of the dudes that had something to do with it ran inside of Walgreens and Popeyes, trying to hurry and change his clothes in front of everybody. They locked them right on up, light skin with dreads. I'm listening to the police thing right now. Now they talking about this man, but his name wasn't released. The search is on for the gunman who shot and killed two teenagers right in the middle of the loop during the busy lunch hour yesterday. The victims were leaving their high school. CBS 2's Noel Brennan has more on the investigation. The teens made it only steps away from the front door of their school, and the shooting happened here, right next to the elevator that leads up to the L tracks. Bullets shattered the glass and sent people inside nearby businesses ducking for cover. At 1226 Friday afternoon, it's business as usual on Jewelers Row. Until a burst of gunfire. Oh my God, there's a shooter. Workers and customers inside the Chicago Landmark Diamond Center take cover. Close the gate! Close the gate! Close the gate! Outside, near Wabash and Washington, Chicago police say two teens are shot. 17-year-old Montario Williams and 16-year-old Robert Boston did not survive. It, it does appear to be a targeted ambush. 
uh, as, the, as the police have said. 34th Ward Alderman Bill Conway says he can't recall a more brazen shooting in broad daylight in the loop. Two high school students coming out of school, getting shot in the middle of the loop, an area that should be safe. I mean, everywhere should be safe, but is historically a very safe place. Is certainly a tragedy, and and I and the families and the school are certainly in in my prayers. Surveillance video captures the teens leaving Innovations High School as a dark sedan pulls up. At least one person gets out, runs up to the teens, and opens fire. The mother of Montario Williams tells CBS2. Montario and Robert were good friends. Montario was looking to graduate and hoping to attend a trade school. His mom thinks he may have gotten into carpentry. She says what happened is surreal, that her son was just trying to survive the streets. That's something that we need to get a handle on, you know, the, the significant uh, gun problem that we have. Chicago police have not said how many suspects they're looking for. At this point, no one is in custody. In the loop, Noel Brennan, CBS 2 News. Noel, thanks. Now, police believe multiple suspects fired shots in this case. There are two suspect vehicles that dark colored sedan and an SUV. As of now, it's no motive. If and when authorities get one, family, you know I will keep you guys updated. If we wrap this video up, once again, rest in peace to all the fallen victims. We send a love and praise to Chicago in this entirety. Nobody safe. We didn't mention one neighborhood downtown, school, and your own family. Fam, let me know how you guys feel about this one in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until then, I'll catch you guys on the next one.